championships. That was 12 years ago. That drought might might be ending this week. We have yet to see, but I'm really hoping so. I want I want to see uh, one of our our USA members who uh, who work really hard and have been doing amazing things up on that podium. All right. Well, I I speak for everybody when I say that. No Americans in this session, but we do have uh, some Pereza of Uganda opening at 140 kilograms. He is getting coached by some Americans today, actually. You can see Kevin Doherty over to the side, giving him some cues. Now, we were talking about his wide, wide grip on the barbell during the snatches. Um, does have quite long arms, so let's see how he handles this jerk, because that is not an event. Oh, it goes to the wide uh, grip there. You know, a little shaky. The, he looked a little shaky in all phases there. The clean, we'll watch on the replay, the clean looked a little tough. And I was wondering about that, seeing his wide grip on the barbell. One of the taller competitors in this weight category. Um, and he does do that wide that wide regrip, which we see um, is fairly common amongst South American and also African competitors. Right, right. What it does is it shortens the distance he has to go with that barbell vertically. And, uh, and the bar simply just go, gets over one's head faster. Uh, now, he did look a little shaky, as you said, in, in my opinion, and somebody who really wasn't a good cleaner. Now, jerk, I made all my jerks. Uh, missed a lot of cleans, though. So coming from a perspective of somebody who wasn't overly strong, somebody like Sarah Robles is way stronger than I could have ever been. Um, just, just a strong individual, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't make any little mistake on the clean uh, because I simply wouldn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens if, if that clean is not super efficient, and you stand up and you're going into that jerk? Unless you have just a, a very impressive jerk, it often takes a lot out of a competitor. Mm -hmm. um, so the clean needs to be cleaner. Um, for the lack of a better term. He needs to be very efficient because he, he doesn't need to be wasting all that energy uh, grinding out of that, that squat, then going into the jerk. Well, let's see if he has better success on his second attempt. Now, one thing to note, and I think it, it did plague him a little bit there, that wide regrip reduces the distance you have to move the bar and move yourself under the barbell, but at the same time, it sometimes comes at the cost of shoulder stability. So let's see if he's able Correct. to make a correction here. Correct. Like I said, let's make this clean a little more efficient, and then uh, hopefully I'll have a lot more in the tank to that jerk. Uh, talked himself out of it. Now, y y you could tell on his first pull there, the tempo was off. Tempo was off. He, he's got too much going on in his head right now. Um, he uh, clearly may be a little bit flustered, maybe Maybe we got a situation where he's cutting body weight and these cleans feel oppressively heavy. And uh, he's asking himself questions, you know, am I gonna really be able to do this? Is it gonna feel heavy? Is it gonna hurt? It's gonna be painful. Uh, he, he can't allow those thoughts in there. He's gotta push that stuff out of his head. And he's just gotta go out there and, and just be aggressive. It's, it's, it's always tough when you come out on the competition platform and that that clean feels a bit like a near a max deadlift sometimes so oh my gosh my um, my coach at the time don mccauley i remember i was at an american open and particularly out of shape you know i think it was after the worlds and um yeah just just kind of for funsy as i was at the american open and uh, one particular clean and jerk uh if i could like i said if i could get it past my knees i was usually successful uh, but that's if I could get it past my knees. So he had time to comment to somebody standing next to him that my first pull was really slow, turned around, and I was still pulling the bar. That's how slow I was from the floor. <laughs> so I know that feeling, and it's just about hanging in there and, uh, again, getting into the wheelhouse of those hips. All right, well, this is his third and final attempt. He needs to make this in order to post a total today. Very important lift for him. I hate to see that, I hate to see it. Well, he unfortunately will not post a total. Did make two snatch attempts, but not successful in any clean and jerks for today. Uh, certainly not the world he was hoping for. This is his world first world championship. Um, you know, just uh, didn't, didn't quite have it in him today. Right, and uh, 
you know, he can he can chalk this up to really great experience, though. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes at the end of the competition, when you look back, you don't do what you want to do. You get you got to see the silver lining, you know. Uh, he's never been on the international stage like this. He knows what it's all about now. Not going to be taken taken off guard by by any of this in the future when we continue to see him compete. Hopefully, um, and honestly, he'll probably forget about it. I mean. If he has a wonderful performance next year, nobody's going to remember this. Mm -hmm. So just got to keep keep heading forward. All right, and this will bring up his teammate and countryman, uh, Sakaya, also of Uganda, who's opening at 152. We may, um, I don't think we'll actually be seeing him follow himself, assuming this is a, a successful lift. We do have some lifters grouped around this kind of low 150s area. Right, right. He was successful with his opening snatch at 117 kilograms, so... I feel like these guys are going to be in for um, some really awkward wait times in the clean and jerk here because we're going to have a lot of attempts at similar weights. Up, up, up. Good. Again, on, super strong as we saw from the snatches. Hold, hold. Yeah, like his teammate, very wide yeah. regrip uh, between the clean and the jerk portions. Three white lights, he's on the board. He will post a total today. Um, he is, again, being coached by a couple Americans, including, um, as we watch this replay, an American coach we have seen uh, on the side of many international stages, and that uh, is Kevin Doherty of Hassle-Free right. Barbell Club. Right. Very, very, uh, like, a, so much knowledge in that guy's head. I mm -hmm. told him when I bumped into him, I was like, you gotta, we got to sit down. you gotta, you got to show me your ways. <laughs> Share some of that wisdom with me so I can be a better coach. So uh, really great to see all these faces here. And, uh, you know, in the spirit of international weightlifting, um, oftentimes a sport separate from, or as Phil Andrews, uh, CEO of USA Weightlifting, would like to say, um, above politics in many ways, you will see coaches from some countries. Coaches, um, you know, the U.S. being the home country this year, it was pretty easy for Kevin to get down or up to Anaheim, I guess, relative right. for where he was going. Right. Um, you know, helping out lifters uh, who might not have been able to bring their coaches right. from their home country. Yeah, so not everybody's coming with a delegation. Right. You know, and um, it's really good to see that hospitality uh, from an American standpoint uh, that these folks are coming from all over the planet and they're being taken care of and their needs are being met because, you know, and that's the spirit of, of the sport. Uh, the ultimate competition for Olympic weightlifters is the Olympics. And in that spirit of just participation and here for the same thing. It's it's good to it's good to witness people sort of transcending those initial barriers mm -hmm. and just helping each other out. Yeah, and it's always fun. I've been fortunate enough to eat in uh, the athletes uh, one of the athlete dining areas this week, and it's really great to see conversations happen across language barriers, cultural right. barriers. Um, you know, no one's really confusing me for an athlete this week, but they're still, <laughs> but they're still saying hello, which is great. Uh, and with that, we bring up the first attempt of Castro of Spain at 153. there yeah maybe a little rush maybe to finish that drive and, and just the jerk is all about rhythm and timing uh, you get the barbell flexing like it does at a certain weight and if you're dip and drive the timing is at all different than it is literally from the empty barbell uh, it's usually a recipe for disaster so he's just got to take his time a little bit and stick that a little bit better clean was easy yeah he is a, a very very explosive quick lifter and uh, you, you mentioned yourself Cheryl sometimes you get out there and the weight actually feels a little bit lighter than you would expect and that could be a recipe for missed lifts right. sometimes the jerk um, gets to extension before you expect it to right and you lose it because you're too strong right um, right and sometimes in the back room uh, there's some technical errors that are happening and, and then you go okay I, I need to make sure that I finish my drive on this next jerk and yeah. You do that, plus the adrenaline, and sometimes that barbell is just moving faster than you can catch up with it. All right, well, we'll see him out for his next attempt at 153. I do believe he will stay here. Oh, I week. think I was going to tell a story um, before, That's uh, right. before our last uh, break. 
Um, I was eating my sushi and when I uh, got that world record, but it was as, as a result of the IWF creating the youth category, so 17 and under, and they went back um, to credit world records to athletes who, because they have to establish the world records when you, when you make um, new categories. Uh, let's watch this clean and jerk and call for the show. And he didn't, didn't want to take his full two minutes, so on the platform early, he wants to get this done and under his belt. Much better attempt for Castro. Much better. Good correction. Uh, so they need. So they went back uh, in history to see uh, what the world records would be in the super heavyweight category, and they stumbled upon my uh, 125 kilo snatch that I did at the Olympics in Sydney in 2000. Uh, I was 17 years old at that competition. Um, so they decided they couldn't find anybody who had snatched more. So 125 kilos, they, they went ahead and let me have it. So it's a world record now, and I feel like I didn't have to do anything. It was <laughs> kind of awesome. Well, you, you put in the work, it was just a while. Right, back. right. I don't remember it, so. Uh, and, and, of course, um, there has been discussion, especially with, um, uh, you know, the IWF did introduce last year a new women's body weight category, the 90-kilogram weight category uh, between 75 and now 90-plus, formerly 75-plus. Um, there could potentially be more weight category shifts um, as we head further and further toward the Tokyo Olympic Games. Um, right, there has that's been, what I'm hearing. Yeah, there has been discussion, especially on the men's side. Um, the men did lose uh, a session at the Olympics, so there will be seven and seven, eight. Um, so we, we might we might see a, a I guess you could call it a, a recategorization or um, a recalibration of body right. weight categories across both genders. So. Right, and, and I think that's fair. I mean, as the sport progresses, um, we got to take into consideration a lot of factors. And uh, yeah, sometimes that happens. And it won't be the last time. But I think by the time I get used to all the new numbers, it'll be different again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We have Taronis of Peru, his opener, 155. Now a new thing for me too, he went right into, he's got the dive technique there, grabbing the bar. Good looking lift. Solid jerk. Yeah, that dive technique, you see, I was anticipating maybe a little bit more time over the bar. Um, but uh, Casey Bergner actually tried that out at the training center and I watched him. And it's really impressive to watch. I think uh, Wes Barnett did that for a while. And um, Wes Barnett, who I believe was the most recent American male to medal at a world championship. Correct, and that was in 1997 Seven. in Thailand. Uh, I remember that. He, he had a great event. And um, yeah, yeah, so we're long overdue, that's for sure. I think, I think this will be the competition. All right, we have uh, Sika, uh, Sikaya, pardon me if I'm mispronouncing that. First time I've seen him and commentate on one of his sessions of Uganda coming out for his second attempt, 157. Nice, healthy, I guess you could say, five kilo jump, which is something we're probably yeah. used to seeing in the clean and jerk at this point. Right, right. Really powerful guy, really strong. A uh, little bit nervous about that jerk. Not nervous, but um, it looked like he had a, a lot of uh, asymmetry there, maybe grabbed the barbell a little bit differently with the left hand versus the right, but the clean, he's going to blow it away, I'm sure. kidding about that clean Cheryl he does blow it away and yeah a bit of asymmetry like his first attempt and we'll see it on the replay he actually does rotate a bit counter counterclockwise and we can actually see it on a replay here he'll rotate toward this camera on the jerk portion but is able to save the lift right 
Right, and I, you know, that that was just pure speculation about maybe the hand, the grip being uh, slightly different. I uh, could be wrong about that, but it does actually look like he's got a wider grip on the left than the right, and that is one of the negative things about adjusting the hand so wide. You really, it takes a lot of practice to get precise because it makes a difference. You know, you got an inch further left on, on the left hand than the right, and uh, that's that translates into a lot of kilos yeah. on one side versus the other. So hopefully he can um, get a little bit more tight with that. All right, now we do have a, a quick break here. It looks like they are the loaders uh, are cleaning off the barbell, and a big shout out to the loaders who are moving more weight than anyone oh my gosh. this weekend. It's such a tough job after many, many hours, and these guys are doing, and gals are doing an amazing job. And uh, a lot of a lot of uh, the loaders this week um, are local athletes. Actually, some have traveled far and wide. Uh, I talked to a, a good buddy of mine, Nick Donzilla, who is a USA weightlifting national medalist who came all the way from Boston. Um, came out actually a week early. He's competing at the American Open next week, uh, which will be in the same venue, but he came out early to help with loading uh, and, great. and other things that USA Weightlifting need a little help with. So, Always looking for volunteers, and you get the best seats in the house if you're loading, though. That's that's huge. You get the you get best seats and good lifting. And, and something that Chad Vaughn has said on live streams before, um, he gets a lot of questions, especially newer athletes, who say they have trouble with kilo to pound conversions and don't really understand kilos. There's no better way to learn that than to load a barbell out of meat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You get very, very familiar with, um, and even visually, you start. You'll be able to count the barbell up just by looking at it. Mm -hmm. Just, just a quick glance. You know how much is on the bar. All right. This will bring up the third attempt for Castro of Spain. 157 kilos. I can't, I think one of my favorite things about competing is what he's experiencing right now and the absolute relief of just being done. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's intense, that, that hour, hour and a half, and putting that barbell down, especially after a successful clean and jerk, and just going, oh, well, it's for, a really great feeling. For athletes in these middle or, in a, or lighter weight classes, it's, it's that feeling, but also the feeling of, oh, I get to go, I get to go eat now. Yes. <laughs> yes. And as a competitor who ate what she wanted prior to the competition as well, I can only imagine how excited uh, these folks are to get, get like some in and out burger or something. All right. Peter Petrov of the Czech Republic is opening attempt, 158 kilograms. That's pretty solid. That was That's a great looking jerk over here. Especially compared to those snatches, you're absolutely right. Um, definitely is a clean and jerker. Yeah. That's for sure. And we mentioned that in the earlier broadcast. He's known to make up a lot of ground during this portion of the lift. And Cheryl, you, you um, <laughs> mentioned in an outburger, it is something that I've heard since we're in California. A lot of international athletes um, have been asking ab about it. And in, in fact, at barbend.com, we write about a lot of these international athletes, and this is our first opportunity. I have one of my uh, one of our staff writers out with uh, out with me this this week, Jake Boley, and we're meeting all these athletes for the first time. Even though we've talked with them over Instagram or over email or over the phone for different pieces of content, and um, you know, I, I think we actually might organize a, a goodwill trip to a local In and Out tonight for some of these athletes. And there's you know probably that nothing be better incredible. to share. That would be incredible, <laughs> and I know, yeah, yeah, I, and no joke, um, it's where. I have I have two friends with me from uh, who have made the journey from Hong Kong to be here. Um, at the invitation of USA Weightlifting, uh, reached out to two Olympians and things like that. Like, hey, you want to come on down, bring some friends? So I let some of my athletes know, and here they are. But that's exactly where we're going for lunch. So uh, I'll let you know how it is. <laughs> All right. With that, we will bring out the opening attempt of Aldu Halib of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, opening at a. Pretty robust, 160 kilograms, and you had mentioned earlier the oscillation of the barbell between the clean and the jerk. On the men's barbell, 160 kilos is where you really begin to see that. Right, right. And again, these these gentlemen are 69 kilos and lighter. Uh, and I can say, 
160 kilos is pretty heavy. Well, uh... Little, but hopefully, hopefully that wasn't a psychological thing. Maybe he just got a little out of position and realized that maybe it was uh, it was unable uh, to bring that back for the second pull. Let's see what happened on replay. Pretty aggressive lean back there, and I wonder if that might have put him out of position. Yeah, it looks like it really d does look like he just he just lost his timing there for a minute. And sometimes, if I would come off the floor with the barbell and I knew it was either got stuck on the platform in a certain spot or it's just anything was off uh, sometimes I mean obviously you, you want to make the attempt on the international stage and you know pull and pray as you said uh, but sometimes you just know as an athlete in your experience that there's nothing you can do but put it down and try it again all right and this will bring out the opening attempt for Braun Huber of Germany who had a very close miss on his third snatch attempt. Yeah, and we saw him grabbing his back a little bit, so hopefully he, ha he doesn't have any residual pain there in the lower back. Uh, that overhead position, I don't know. Maybe maybe got a little dizzy there? Well, let's see, let's see. Let's, let's take a look at the replay. The clean did look very strong here, Cheryl. Really easy clean. I was a bit surprised. Even the dip and drive, and once he got the weight over his head, I thought he had it, but maybe... Uh, Maybe something's going funny with that overhead position. That was a bit forward, yeah, though. Quite yeah. forward now that, now that we're looking at the side view. It is, it is great. Uh, a big shout out to uh, the folks at USA Weightlifting and on uh, the video and streaming here uh, team here. We have Scott and Austin who have, have a great setup here streaming on USA Weightlifting. Org, and uh, it is really great having a different angle for the replay. So having that oh, multi camera yeah. setup. Um, can, can be insightful uh, not only for us giving some commentary, but at home you can, uh, if you're a fan of weightlifting, you can see some of the nuances and see some corrections lifters make from attempt to attempt. So having both those those perspectives is uh, is a real treat. It is, and and uh, as a coach now, I really try to sort of be in that position, that three quarter view, so you can sort of see. Um, uh, just a really great perspective on what's happening in the lift. Right, this is Al Duhalib of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for his second attempt. Um, the first attempt wasn't much more than a than a pull. Um, right. So, uh, we'll be instructing him just to take his time a little bit. And see how this do goes. What he knows how to do. There you go. Yeah, you see that bar bend, that oscillation. Uh, great, pretty good jerk, pretty good jerk. But yeah, you got you got the clean together and uh, smashed it. it. It must have been just a timing issue. Uh, that was that was quite easy for somebody to get sort of psyched out about. Uh, I think I think he just missed his timing on that first yeah. attempt. Yeah. Well, um, he is on the board and. We'll post a total today, which is always fantastic right. uh, to see. And that this, as far as we know, is his first world championship. So with that, we will bring out the second attempt for Brontuba of Germany, who was successful in two of his snatch attempts, missed his first clean and jerk attempt here. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to sit back and kind of watch this one. I want to see maybe uh, what corrections or changes he makes on the jerk portion. Right. Right, there's a lot of different things that could have could have been going on, so let's see how he handles it this time. Pretty easy again. Maybe he is he is a bit hurt. He he looks like he lost a lot of confidence in that overhead position. Yeah, we can check on the replay, uh, giving giving a little more time there on the platform, and sometimes that is strategic to give yourself a few more seconds. Right. Because they don't start that clock until you come off. Exactly. Um, Let's see here. And that bit of that a dip forward. That right arm drifts behind and begins to bend a little bit. Um, it does. In the load overhead is so important to do your absolute best setting up the jerk, the dip and drive vertical, because taking that barbell um, and moving it forward and trying to get that vertical momentum and get under it is is just almost insurmountable. So staying straight up and down is so important. So when you drift forward like that, it's it's pretty tough to recover. And this will bring up the final attempt on the day for Sakaya of 
Uganda, 160 kilograms on the barbell. Um, had to fight for his first two jerks, and what I'll be watching for here, the regrip between the clean and the jerk, and also um, a bit of that helicoptering at the right. top, see if he can fight that uh, at this heavier weight. Which is not unusual, especially for an athlete. I'm curious to uh, to know how many years he's been competitive or training. So strong on that clean. Probably load 170 kilos on him. Oh, wasn't able to recover from that at that time. Well, he will be credited with his second attempt at 157. He finishes the day with a 274 kilogram total. Very respectable for your first for his first world. Championships. I'll take another look at that replay and and sure. It's clean. It's clean. Not, it's like no weight on the board. But you know what? Unfortunately for him right there, yeah. this uh, weightlifting does not test the clean. It tests the clean and the jerk. It certainly does. All right. Maybe you got a little little something on the bar there. We saw a, uh, a loader point to it. The technical official is there. Um, Every once in a while, what happens is be, I, a lot of people don't realize if you're brand new to lifting or uh, never never seen it before, that barbell is very heavy and it's resting right on top of the clavicle. Sometimes we get some wounds, a little bit of bleeding just from the, the rough, the knurling there, yeah. and uh, got to clean that off. Or on, on the shins on the way up, actually, you will have some nerving. That, that's actually where, where I suffered from that more on the clavicle. Um, as a, as, a, as a weight lifter. Yeah, super common, yeah. super common. And then, you, of course, you have the callus tearing that happens with the hands. So, uh, but they're they're on top of it. Like I said, they're doing a great job keeping everything uh, nice and clean for everybody. All right, this is a make or break lift for Braun Tuber. He needs this to post a total today. Uh, he's an experienced lifter. We've seen him on the international stage uh, numerous times. Someone who doesn't have a lot of bomb outs from what I can tell, so. All right, come on. Hold it, hold it. Ah. And while he started off the competition with a, a, a great first two snatches, he and it looks like he is might be having a little back trouble today. Unfortunately, right. it will not post a total. Yeah, I think I think that last snatch that he had, he got way out of position with the, the early celebration there. Maybe the way you stack up that weight, loaded your spine, you start wiggling and the hips go forward, like all sorts of things can happen. Um, so maybe he tweaks something. Uh, surprisingly, though, he's grabbing his back. The cleans didn't seem to give him any issue. It's just that overhead position. Yeah. So, which again does does put uh, a different kind of force on the spine right. and, and the lower back. I, you know, I, I'm uh, someone who, when I was when I was lifting, and still lifting, is just not the same uh, competitive, not with the same competitive mindset. Um, I always noticed that if if I was having back issues, clean was never a problem. It was always hmm. going overhead. Interesting. That yeah, it's very different. This will bring up the first attempt for Jerome of Thailand. I noticed the, um, I'm always very impressed by uh, the Thai weightlifting team's efficiency in the jerk. They routinely seem to be pretty solid jerkers. Um, so somebody, somebody, uh, Coaching over there has really got a good handle on, on how to teach that to uh, the developing athletes. I don't have much to criticize on, on, on that list. Well, that's pretty solid. I, don't I know, really just sitting here being impressed by it. Yeah, 161 kilos is heavy. It is heavy. If you would maybe remind readers at home, you are actually still the American record holder. I am at this moment in time. Sure. I, uh, I have the snatch record of 128 kilos. And I have the clean and jerk record of 161 kilos and the total record of 287 kilos. Still all Pan American records, too, is that I, I believe. Yeah, I believe that's correct, yeah. All right, this will bring up Tarones of Peru, one of two junior lifters in this session. He's had a pretty good day so far. And completely forgot about that dive technique again. Mm, there you go. All right, pretty good looking lift. He's Not stays perfect all. in the clean jerks. He took a six kilo jump, which is significant at this body weight category. It is, it is. That's that's a huge percentage um, to go up, and uh, yeah, he seemed to not have too much trouble with it. Now we some of these big jumps we will see a little later on. Uh, Monday and Tuesday in some of the heavier body weight categories, you will see athletes taking 
eight, 10 kilo jumps. Um, right. And of course, the, the percentage of, of body weight of those jumps and uh, actual overall percentage of their lifts is, is much lower there. Right, right. Um, I, it was pretty routine for me to um, to take five kilo jumps, um, almost minimum, unless, of course, you know, we're going for a particular. And sometimes you find yourself in a position where uh, you could lift significantly more, but you are not because you're, you're jostling for metal position. Um, 2005, when I got third place overall in Doha at the World Championships, great day, felt amazing. Uh, could have cleaned and jerked a heck of a lot more, but didn't need to. Just trying to go for that bronze medal, so uh, you do what you got to do on that day. All right, we have Herrera of Ecuador opening at 162, so he's above your record now. Nice clean. Wow. Good looking lift. Wow, very good looking lift. Ecuador, also a country that I've noticed, and I, I was fortunate enough to comment to be on uh, color commentary at the Pan American Championships a little earlier this year in Miami. Um, I don't know if Ecuador missed a single jerk that entire competition. <laughs> <laughs> and that's significant. It really is. Uh, the more I think about um, how proficient I was at the jerk. Now, that being said, I, I, I missed my fair share of cleans. Um, it, it really uh, was a relief to be able to stand up from a clean and just know that you're getting ready to make this lift. Yeah. All right. I'll do Halib his final lift of the competition this uh, would move him if he makes it to four for six on the day at his first world championship. So let's see if he's able to make this. Oh, no. Similar to that first attempt, yeah. just not really able to commit to that clean. Well, that's unfortunate because uh, the clean that he did make on the second attempt seemed quite strong. Well, I'm sure we'll see him again on the international stage. Or, you know, like I said, uh, had some missed lists, but overall was able to post a total uh, solid performance right, in sure, this nothing session. Nothing to sneeze at. He, he got some good lifts in. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing more out of him. This will bring up uh, the lifter. It looks like it will be Herrera. No, we do have a change. It will be uh, Petrov of the Czech Republic. It's been a while since we've seen him on stage, and that is another thing that lifters have to deal with in international competitions. A lot of changes, a lot of jockeying right. for position. Um, they might have to take some, some more lifts at the back in the warm-up area to stay warm between right. their attempts. Right, whether it's a full clean and jerk, uh, which does take a lot of energy, so it really depends on how long the wait is. Uh, but some athletes are just going back there um, and just grabbing the barbell and doing, doing a heavy pull or two mm -hmm. just to stay nice and sharp because you can get quite cold quite fast. Man, man, I, I don't, if it, all these, all these first pulls and things like that and, and the, um, the difference between the makes and the misses, again, he had such a solid clean and jerk on the other attempt and again maybe maybe it's a result of that rest time yeah you know certainly it's it's um you know maybe the the, the pull stays strong but you you start feeling a little bit of uh, a little bit of tightness maybe the hips start getting a little tight the right. quads get a little and tight this room is very well air conditioned it's it a is. little chilly in here i got my jacket on anybody who knows me personally um <laughs> knows that that I'm, I'm warm most of the time but it's a little chilly in here so these athletes they're sweaty uh, they got these singlets on, and when you sit for any length of time, you can cool down fast. All right, Jerome's second attempt, Lifter from Thailand. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, his jerk here, something we noted on his first attempt, real right. strong overhead. Real strong clean, too. Pretty solid. Pretty maybe, solid. maybe not as as sharp as his first attempt, but that'll be good for three white lights. A little, little softer receiving the bar uh, overhead, but the position was was good enough. He's probably telling himself he needs to be a little bit more aggressive, snapping under the barbell and sticking it. Well, so. he he still has uh, one attempt remaining, so we will see him yet again. And with that, it looks like the lifter will once again become uh, Tyrones of Peru. 
had a few changes on the board, so apologies if we're a couple seconds behind. Uh, on yeah, it's bouncing clear. around a lot here. I'm, I'm just looking at these blinking lights. We got the scoreboard in front of us that we're looking at, and uh, uh, yeah, one name lights up, and then it's the next name, and sometimes we gotta just wait and see what happens. There's a lot of numbers thrown, being thrown around in the warm-up room, um, but it looks like Terones is coming out for his uh, third final attempt to the jerk. It'll be a three for three in the clean and jerk with this lift. Yep, and he this is actually to go five for six on the day, which would be a, a, a pretty solid performance, all oh, things that's considered. A, that's a great performance. That's great. That's nothing to be disappointed about. And what I did note, David, the other day is uh, the rule change about the knee bands and the socks in the lifting suit actually being able to come in contact. Typically, we, uh, or historically, uh, the singlet could not come in contact with those knee bands or those socks, so it's interesting for me to, to adjust visually because mm -hmm. it just stood out. I was like, wait a second. Tight, tight, tight. That's a great save. That's that a was great save. His center of gravity is over his head, so... If anything is is a little bit off, fighting and pulling that barbell back in position is really uh, that's a really really great fight. Glad well, he stuck that. Yeah, let's check out the replay here. He had to fight for it and a little bit of turning. Uh, had to bring those feet in line. Uh, but five for six on the day, really great performance. Two ninety four kilo total. Again, it's pretty impressive um, for me uh, watching a lot of not struggle, but definitely using a lot of energy in that clean and then being able to get some air and, and have enough in reserve to, to make the jerk happen as well. Yeah, he did not look confident over that barbell. Um, kind of see it in his face. Sometimes an athlete takes a, like an obvious amount of time, extra amount of time over the barbell and you know he's having a conversation with himself and unfortunately he wasn't able to, to talk himself out of uh, you know talk himself out of uh, not cleaning the bar. So but that happens sometimes. He's credited with uh, what's his first attempt there. Uh, 158 kilos. So uh, he got that clean and jerk in that first one. So that that's definitely good. Well, with that's that, easy. with that, we only have three lifts left here in the men's 69 kilogram B session. Just a, a quick preview of the rest of the day, folks. We have three lifts left here, um, and then Cheryl and I will be going off air. Um, Action will resume with the 63 kilo women's 63 kilogram B session at 2 p.m. Now that um, will be for those outside of the U.S. Um, and those in, in territories that do uh, uh, do not have a different broadcast deal will still be live streamed on usaweightlifting.org, but for um, folks within the United States, um, that will be streamed on ESPN3. So we'll, there will still be live color commentary, a lot of great action in that women's 53, or sorry, 63 kilogram B session, um, just maybe on a different channel. <laughs> and then uh, a little later on in the day at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time, we have the women's 53 kilogram A session. And uh, then at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the women's 58, 58 kilogram A session. So still lots of action uh, yet to come here in Anaheim. Yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, continuing seeing some great weightlifting. This is a bit of a bigger jump too, especially in the clean and jerk. Well, becomes obvious why. That's pretty solid. That's a good looking lift. Very good looking lift. Yeah, 157, one, sorry, 67 is good for Herrera. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was cutting him 10 kilos short there. I know, give, him, give, him, give that man his 10 kilos. So fast with that second pull. A lot of people spend too much time, I think, pulling the barbell vertically um, instead of concentrating on getting under. Now there's that there's that delicate dance, finishing the pull and still changing directions. Uh, so it takes many repetitions and, and many years to get very good at that timing, but he's got it locked in. And with that, we only have two lifts left. Now again, if you're used to turning into USA Weightlifting, 
uh, national competitions. The sessions often tend to be a bit bigger, but we only have uh, only nine lifters here in this session, so things tend to move a little quicker, qu quickly. We're not having one of those um, two and a half, three hour sessions that we sometimes get, so it right. makes our lives a little easier in the commentary booth. And again, not a lot of two minute clocks be because uh, a lot of similar weights here. So it's moving along nicely. Let's see what Jerome has. Strong legs, strong legs. And Cheryl, you might want to want to speculate a little bit as to what might have uh, happened there for Jerem of Thailand. You know what? I really have no idea. <laughs> um, there is there is the chance that he simply just got really dizzy and needed to drop that barbell. Your carotid arteries in your neck there. If that bar lands on those at the same time, you can you can black out pretty fast. Uh, you don't have enough oxygen going to the brain, obviously, so he could have felt that and knew it was probably time to let go of the barbell because sometimes we see people trying to fight that sensation and uh, collapsing underneath that barbell. So uh, he probably just cut his losses. Because he had a solid jerk, so uh, he's credited with, uh, let's see here, his 164-kilogram uh, jerk. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. And with that, we will have the final lift of this men's 69 kilogram B category. It is the final cleaning jerk for Herrera of Ecuador. And folks, um, you know, we'll give a quick outro, but uh, after this lift, after this lift, we'll give a quick outro. But in the meantime, just want to say thanks so much for tuning in. It's, it's a lot of fun to bring you the action live from the Anaheim Convention Center uh, this morning and early afternoon, Pacific Standard Time. Of course, for some folks on the east coast of the U.S., uh, this is a nice little bit of afternoon viewing. Oh. Well, that'll be a no lift for Herrera. I'm glad he snuck out from that uh, yeah. under that uh, safely. Um, and that that's it. That will end the session. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me, David. You know what? I'm looking forward to being here uh, for a couple more of these throughout the week and uh, talking with the audience about what's, what's happening here. It's an exciting event. makes me want to compete again. <laughs> All right, Almost. well, thank, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, for joining uh, joining us, Cheryl. And again, um, for USA Weightlifting and their official media partner, barbent.com, I'm David Tell, joined by Cheryl Hayworth on this broadcast. Thanks so much, folks. More action to come your way a little bit later on this afternoon.